My name is Jack Evans, and I'm headed east from Las Vegas to find my fiance, Kate. Three months ago, she had to go back home. I should have gone with her. Where were you? I've been trying to reach you all day, but you never answered your phone. I had an impromptu surgery over at St. Luke's. The patient didn't make it, but I'd rather not talk about it. Look, I'm sorry for not answering. It was just a rough night. You know how it gets. I know, but I wouldn't have called a thousand times if it wasn't important. It's my mother, Jack. She's in the hospital. What? <laughs> what from? <laughs> Heart attack. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's in a stable condition for now, but I have to go home. I have to be there for her. I understand. Will you be leaving tomorrow? I was hoping we could leave tonight. <sighs> Wait, we? Kate, you know I can't go. I've got a dozen surgeries lined up for next week. Some of them were scheduled months in advance. I can't just cancel them. You can't just take a personal leave of absence? Do you know how many surgeons there are here? Not enough. I can't just abandon my career at a moment's notice. I think you're making excuses. This is a family matter, Jack. She's going to be your mother, too. And you know how much she loves you. Trust me. I want to be there for Brenda. But I just can't. You know this. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Kate. Look, we both know there's nothing there anymore. Can't we at least talk about it first? Maybe there's nothing there for you. But my whole life is there, Jack. My friends, my family. I left everything behind because I love you, and I would do anything for you. I know you always said you would never go back to Forest Lawn. I thought this emergency would be an exception. I guess not. It's a cold night. The rain's been falling all day, and the only light along this road is from my high beams, occasionally catching the reflective eyes of a deer or some other nocturnal creature. I shudder at the thought of what could be lurking out there. Kate always said I had a vivid imagination when it comes to the darkness. I could have actually gone with her, but the truth is, I was scared. Even now I'm scared. I'm from Forest Lawn, same as Kate, and I don't have many good memories of the place. She was right about me making excuses. I lied to her, and she saw right through me. The look of disappointment on her face is burned into my memory. I tried to stay in touch as much as possible, but eventually, she stopped answering. I was worried that something bad happened. But then, after weeks of silence, I finally received a voicemail from her. Jack, my mother's dead. The vessels are getting close now. He's with them too. I love you, Jack. Goodbye. It was unusual. I recognized her voice, but that wasn't the Kate I know. She mentioned vessels, whatever the hell that means. And she sounded so cold. I have to find out if she's all right. Shit! <laughs> what the hell was that?
Hello? Hello? I swore I almost hit a man, but it must have been something else. I don't know what. I, I can't think about it too much or my paranoia will set in. Christ. I've been on the road for 17 hours now. I just need to get some rest. Uh, can I help you? Uh, yeah. I was just wondering if you could tell me where the nearest motel is located. I looked online, but couldn't find anything. Yeah, makes sense. I haven't updated those maps in years. Well, you can find the Twin Pines Motel over on Carson Street. Uh, it's only two blocks northeast across the intersection. You can't miss it. Oh, thank you so much. Ain't no problem. Oh, and the owner's a friend of mine, so tell him that Jim sent you. You'll get a nice discount. Jack, is that you? I'm sorry. Do I know you? Oh, come on, man. Middle school wasn't that long ago, was it? Wait, are you one of the Reeves twins? Yep, the better one. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Reeves, you're still using that line after all these years? Hey, it's a good line. <laughs> Jokes aside, it's been a while, man. How have you been? Busy. I'm a surgeon now, so I work all the time. I feel ya. I've been working my ass off, too. Nothing as fancy as that, though. Hey, a job's a job. What about your brother? How's he doing? Oh, uh, you know, Tim, the guy's uh, always keeping his hands dirty and his... Uh, feet wet. Some people never change. Ain't that a fact? Yeah. It seems like just yesterday we were all kids with nothing to worry about. Time flies, huh? That it does. Say, are you still seeing Kate? Yeah. We're about to get married, actually. No way. I mean, that's not all surprising, really. I mean, look at the other bitches around these parts. You got the only one with the big ass. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Anyways, congratulations. You should probably get the hell out of Forest Lawn as soon as possible, though. Good things don't seem to thrive here. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Hey, um, it's pretty late, and I'm running on fumes over here. Yeah, no worries. I gotta get back to the grind. It was good seeing you again. Yeah, you too. And hey, if you ever want to bring Kate over to catch up, have a beer, whatever, Tim and I live at the Woodhaven trailer park right next to the entrance. You can come, too. <laughs> Once you get past the hicks and the weird smells, it's a cozy place. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, I'll be sure to look you up. Hi. Hello there. Can I help you, Mr... Jack Evans. Yeah, I need a room, but I don't know how long I'll be staying. Could be a week, maybe more. Well, it's $69 a night for $54 a week, or $1,200 for the month. A month sounds fine. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, a guy named Jim from the Double Down Diner recommended your motel to me. Is that so? 
Hotel. Well, in that case, I can give you 15% off. <laughs> Great. All right. I just need a credit card and a photo ID. A real photo ID. Emphasis on the real. Sure. Say, I couldn't help but notice the Nevada plates on your car when you pulled up. Is this your first time in Michigan? No. I'm from here, actually. Oh, really? Whereabouts? Forest Lawn. I see. What brings you back home? I'd rather not say. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. I was just making conversation. It's okay. Just... It's a long story. I understand. Hey, did you happen to hear about that big fire they had a few days back? No. I just got into town. What happened? Well, it was the damnedest thing. What they called a raging inferno out in the woods by the old radio station. Damn near burned the whole forest down. Wow. That's awful. Yeah, it was all over the news. I'd never seen anything like it in Michigan. But then this rain started. Like some kind of divine intervention. Seems like it. I guess I can't complain too much about the rain then. (laughs) Quite a business, that fire. Anyway, there's a key to your room. Room 22, just on the corner there. Plenty of privacy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any time. Well, you're all set, Mr. Evans. Have a good night now. You too. That sound. The same as before. I just need to get some sleep. I'll go to Kate's house tomorrow. Jesus, I never thought I'd see this place again. (sighs) It's been a decade, and it looks exactly the same. Kate's mom was always so nice to me. (laughs) She wanted me to marry Kate even back then. Kate, it's Jack. Kate? Her car is here. But there's no answer. I know Kate enough to realize that's not normal. Maybe I can try around back. Kate! The back door has been broken into. The house is trashed. The dining room chairs are tipped over. The fridge is standing open. The food is rotten, as if there wasn't already enough cause for concern. The TV is on, but it's just static. There's an old VCR, a camcorder, and some tapes strewn across the floor. There's something scribbled all over the walls, some kind of drawings of a tall man in the woods and the words always watching I just realized I've been shaking ever since I stepped foot in the house this feeling is all too familiar the door to Kate's room has some kind of burn marks on it and blood I dread what I might see in her room but I still have to know The walls are covered in more scribble drawings. The window is broken, and there's blood all over the floor. But no sign of Kate. Damn it. 
What the hell happened here? I have to tell the police. Someone's over there, in the trees. Two people in masks. Could they be the ones behind this? Hey! This is private property! You're trespassing, assholes! Fuck this. Yeah. Hey, Norris. How's the wife? Eh, uh, you know, enjoying her maternity leave, getting lots of rest. She'd have to, carrying that demon seat of yours for nine months. Hey, shut up. <laughs> uh, we've been friends for, what, eight years, and I've never pictured you as the family type. <laughs> you and me both. And get, get this, I actually cried thinking about it. Can you imagine that? Me crying. Ha! <laughs> You're getting soft in your old age. But for real, I hope the baby's doing well. Thank you, thank you. But, uh, what brings you to my office, Tommy boy? Well, we got a weird missing persons report, Marv. The guy's talking to Kent right now. I didn't hear much, but it already sounds like one of Kent's special cases. You better check it out. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Better grab my tinfoil hat. So why didn't you fly here with your fiancé? Seems like a family matter. It's embarrassing to admit, but I've always had a fear of flying. Plus, Forest Lawn is a place I never wanted to come back to. Bad memories here? Eh, you could say that. After receiving the voicemail, why didn't you call the police instead of going there yourself? Look, I could just tell something was wrong. I figured I could go and talk to her, but... I wasn't expecting to find the place ransacked like that. I see. And when did you first arrive in Forest Lawn? This morning. I got a motel room last night and went to her house as soon as I woke up. Which motel? It's called the Twin Pines. I know the place. It's over on Carson Street. And is that the best place to reach you? Yeah. Room 22. You can also call my cell. I have a business card here. Alright, Kent. Fill me in. But... Please. Bullet points only. All right, Sarge. This is Jack Evans. He arrived last night from Las Vegas to contact his fiance, Kate Moore. He got a room at the Twin Pines Motel before going to her house, which was in a disheveled state, including blood in and around Kate's bedroom. Upon exiting the home, he saw two men wearing masks, trespassing on the property and watching him from the woods. Mr. Evans, can you describe these men? Uh, yeah. They were around the same height. One was wearing a white, doll-like mask and a dull yellow jacket. And the other was all dressed in black and wearing a mask that looked like an executioner's hood. And you're thinking these guys did something to your girl? I don't know. Kate wasn't there. But there was a lot of blood in her room. Mr. Evans, do you by chance have a photo of your fiancé? Yes, of course. In my wallet. I always have it with me. She's beautiful. I can see why you traveled 2,000 miles for her. Thank you. I do have a theory, Norris. Hold it! We don't deal in theories, we deal in standard practice and a little thing called evidence. Mr. Evans, Detective Kent and I will look into the matter and keep you updated on our findings. Wait, I'm going with you. Excuse me? Letting a civilian tag along to a crime scene is considered misconduct, in case you didn't know. Yeah, but this is my fiancé we're talking about. I need to know if she's alright. I understand your urgency, Mr. Evans. I do. But that's not enough for us to break protocol. Not to mention those masked men. It's not safe for a civilian to go there, even with a police escort. Let us do our jobs, Mr. Evans. We'll contact you as soon as we know something. <sighs> Fine. You're right. Just... please find her. We'll do everything in our power. Hey, you see any crazies around here? 
No, just trees. Well, you can't be too careful. I'm pretty sure that was Bigfoot crossing the road at the stoplight. That was Jim from the diner. Could have fooled me. Funny. I thought so. What's the deal with this Jack guy anyways? What do you mean? I mean, if he's from Vegas, why was his fiance all the way across the damn country? Well, she's from here. She came back to be with her dying mother. This is actually the mother's house. No shit. Hey, Ken. Hand me the Mossberg. You're the boss, Norris. Damn straight. Ain't that something? What? It's a bright and sunny afternoon, but you'd never know it from in here. I know. I can't see a thing. Can I borrow your flashlight? What's the matter with yours? I lost mine chasing that peeping Tom last night, remember? How could I forget? Here you go, Butterfingers. Look at these scribbles. He didn't say anything about his fiance being an artist, did he? No, he didn't. Yeah, didn't think so. Come on, Marv, be professional. What? I'm just saying, the drawings suck. Not like he's gonna overhear that. Looks like power's out in the whole house. Uh, probably a blown fuse or something. Yeah, something. Ah, always with the conspiracies. Speaking of which, I mentioned that I had a theory. You did? Well, let's hear it. Obviously, we need to investigate Kate's disappearance. But it makes me think of these cases we keep getting about the masked assailants. You know, the ones that hide in someone's house for weeks or months at a time, and then kill the owners? Adrian, there's nothing to suggest that's what happened here. Maybe not, but it just seems strange that there are so many instances like this. And then there was the big fire just before Jack arrived. We've been treating it all like isolated cases, but what if it's all connected? <sighs> then we got the second coming of the Manson family or something, and we'll take them out one way or another. Now, for the time being, let's stay focused on this case, huh? Right. What do you know about the Manson family? My wife is always fascinated by that weird shit, God knows why. I know Charles Manson more than I know my own father. Has stopped in some parts of the county, but they're still feeling the effects of the torrential rain that's been battering Forest Lawn for over a week now. Flood warnings continue across the county and authorities caution that many roads are completely washed out right now, so please be careful if you have to venture outside. In sports news tonight, the Pistons go up against the Kobe Bryant-led Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers are favorites right now in the playoffs, but I'm still rooting. Hello? Hello, Mr. Evans. It's Detective Kent. Oh, hi. Uh, what did you find out? Nothing yet. And the men you told us about were nowhere in sight. What? But they were there, Detective. I, I saw them. I wasn't making it up. Relax. I believe you. I'm just telling you what happened. Until we get a warrant, Sergeant Norris and I will be making the rounds of the local hospitals and morgues to see if your fiancé turns up. Not to say that she will, but... No, I... <sighs> I understand. Please find her. We'll do our best. Thank you. By the way, I have a gut feeling there's more going on here. I'm going to text you my personal number, so you can contact me directly should anything else turn up. Thank you, Detective.
<sighs> I expected the nightmares to return when I arrived here, but not like this. I've never had such a vivid dream in my life. I could feel the flame surrounding me, searing my flesh. And that man, I can still see his face when I close my eyes. Even now, I still feel like I'm in the dream. It's 3.33 in the morning. Who the hell would be calling at this hour? Wait. It can't be. Hello? Jack? Kate? Oh my god. Where have you been? I went back to the house, but it was broken into. There was blood in your room. God, I've been worried sick. I miss you, Jack. I'm... Uh, I miss you too. Are... are you okay? I'm sorry I didn't come back to Forest Lawn with you. I'm so sorry. I need you, Jack. I need you. Kate, listen. I'll be right there. Just... just don't leave the house. Please. Kate! Please, no! Kate! That was Kate. She's alive. I have to go to her. Shit. It's pitch black out here. The power's still out. How was she able to call me from the house? Kate! Damn it. This flashlight is brand new. I'm getting that sinking feeling in my stomach again. Oh, come on! Work, you piece of shit! Oh, thank God. Without the flashlight, I wouldn't be able to see a foot in front of me. Kate! I'm here, baby! Where are you? What the fuck? Who is it? It's Detective Kent. I got your message. Sorry to disturb you so early, but you sounded desperate on the phone. Are you okay? Don't worry. I haven't been able to sleep. Jesus, what happened to you? You're bleeding. Would you like to sit down? I'd prefer to stand. Thank you. So fill me in. What the hell happened last night? What's with all the cuts? I... I, I don't know where to begin. I, I know how a lot of this will sound. It's okay. Take your time. Okay. So, I startled awake after a nightmare. It was 3.33. And then I got a call on my cell phone. The caller ID said it was coming from Kate's house. And I was in shock. It was actually Kate. Wait, your fiancé actually got in touch with you? Yeah. She told me that she missed me. And what happened then? She was panicking and started saying that she needed me. And then the call ended. I had to see her, so I got in my car and went to her house. And was she there? I, I don't... I don't know. I went inside and the power was still out. I made my way towards the stairs when a woman's body was dropped right in front of me. A body? So she was dead? She had to be. 
She didn't move. Is there a chance that the woman was your fiancé? No. I mean, I don't know. God, I hope not. But it was too dark to tell. Before I could see who she was, I was attacked by some... thing. Not someone? I hesitate to call it human. I mean, it looked human, in a way, but it was something else. Well, what did this thing do? It tackled me on the floor and just started swinging a big knife around. It cut me a few times. More than a few by the looks of it. Are you going to be alright? I'm a surgeon. It's nothing I can't fix. I guess you're lucky then. So how were you able to get away? I fought with whatever it was until the power started surging. And then the TV came on. I heard a voice in the static. Then the thing just... left. I got out of there as fast as I could. I see. Alright. So was that it? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Sergeant Norris and I will check out the crime scene, and once we know more, we'll contact you. Wait, Kent. I just wanted to say thank you for hearing me out. Any other cop would have had me committed by now. I don't know. You seem different. The world is a strange place, Jack. And I've seen enough of it to know that anything is possible. That said, I do have to place you under temporary house arrest. For what? It's nothing personal, Jack. But if what you told me is true and there is a dead woman in that house, we can't rule you out as a suspect. For your protection, I'll have an officer safeguard the motel until we conclude the investigation. <sighs> okay. I'll be in touch. Hello? Jack Evans. Now that you're alone, we need to talk. Who am I talking to? Just a shadow. I didn't want to involve you in all of this, but it seems that fate has other plans for you. There's more to Kate's disappearance than you know. Who the fuck are you? And how do you know Kate? The vessels were watching her for a long time. And they're always watching. You better start answering my questions, or I'm hanging up. You don't want to do that, Jack. I'm the only one who can help you find Kate. You know where she is? All will be revealed in time. For now, keep our exchanges between us, or you will never hear from me again. Hello? Hello? Shit! Fucking A. That's a dead body, alright. So Jack was telling the truth. Maybe. For all we know, he's the one that wasted this chick. I don't think so. Call it a gut feeling, but I believe him. That's what I love about you, Adrian. Always the optimist. But let's get the autopsy reports before we start holding his hand. Hey, Jack mentioned some tapes on the floor, right? You didn't see anything like that last time we were here, did you? I don't think so. Yeah, me neither. Maybe, ju just maybe, just maybe, he was lying. Hold on, the camcorder is here. Huh, there's no SD card. Uh, fucking figures. You know, maybe my memory isn't as good these days, but didn't we tell the man to stay put? Stay put does not mean go to an active crime scene. He's just worried about his fiance. You can't fault him for that. No, but I can sue that rat bastard for interfering with our investigation. He's just lucky I actually wanted to get out of the house. The wife's got morning sickness and, uh, yeah, it's not good. Oh yeah? I've heard the first child is always the hardest. Damn right. It's an adjustment for sure. But I'm excited, you know? I keep thinking about holding that baby and I just... Get emotional? Yeah, I guess. But then I start thinking about the job. You know, seems like today. How can you raise a kid to be innocent and happy knowing what's out there? Huh. I never really thought about it before. Yeah, I don't know, man. 
Sometimes, if I'm being honest, this world scares the hell out of me. You have one new voice message from Anthony Wells, sent on Wednesday, May 5th. New message. Hey, Kate, it's Anthony again. I'm at my dad's house for the night. I haven't been able to sleep for the last week. Listen, do you remember those tapes that Tim and Brian showed us? I don't know if it's just me, but ever since we watched them, I've been having nightmares. Or at least I hope they're just nightmares. Look, I've been seeing horrible things, Kate, around every corner. I'm losing track of what's real. I don't know what the fuck to do. Just call me back, okay? I want to know if you're all right. God damn it. It can't be just me. Now that I pray you're about going to this show. Mother shit! How the hell did that happen? What's that you were saying about this world scaring you? Kindness, I mean. Jeez. You didn't really think I meant killing your loved ones, did you? But I mean, if you want to, I'm not gonna stop you. Race on the wide. Who am I? Oh, you suffer at Candle Cove. Look out. Here comes the skin taker. Good afternoon. Is something the matter? No, not at all, son. I just noticed you've been cooped up here for a while now. Thought you might be hungry. Got us each a sandwich from the diner if you'd like some company. Well, thanks. That's very kind of you. Uh, come on in. Oh, uh, let's sit outside. It's a beautiful day. I'm not supposed to leave the room. Well, I got permission from the officer there. Got him his own sandwich, too. Peanut butter and prune jelly. <laughs> He's gonna be occupied for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why they started the safeguard here. But I'm guessing you're involved somehow. Yeah, I guess I am. You didn't kill anyone, did you? No, no. Nothing like that. Oh, well, good. Wouldn't feel right sharing a mail with a killer, you know. <laughs> I'm here looking for someone, and they haven't turned up yet. What's her name? Who says it's a uh, her? I wasn't born yesterday, son. That's a long drive for just some person. Besides, I noticed the picture in your wallet. You're very observant, Mr. Hey, I never got your name. Duke Winston. The Duke Winston. That's a nice name. I guess my parents thought so. So, does your lady friend have a name? Kate. She's my fiancé. Whoa! Fiancé! How'd you meet her? We were sweethearts growing up. My family moved to Carlin, Nevada when I was 12, but we always stayed in touch. And she moved all the way to Nevada to be with you? Yeah, as soon as she graduated high school. That's some um, dedication right there. It's a special thing, Mr. Evans. She's a special woman. Lord knows those are hard to come by. I haven't found the woman just yet that could tame the Duke. <laughs> oh, you're something else, man. I'm sure the right one will come along eventually. Too true. Until then, I'm a free bird, baby. <laughs> well, that's about the end of my lunch break. Listen, you can stay here as long as you need to until you find your fiancé. And if I can be of any assistance, just let me know. Thank you. That's greatly appreciated, Duke. Please call me the Duke. Hello? 
Hello, Jack. It's Adrian Kent. Oh, hey. Please tell me you have some good news. I do. The body we recovered from the crime scene was not your fiance. Oh, thank God. But, wait, if it wasn't Kate, who was it? Fingerprint analysis identified her as Patricia Gunderson. That name doesn't ring any bells. I didn't think it would. We learned that she was a vagrant who had been homeless for some time. She was likely wandering through the woods seeking shelter. Poor woman. We also got the forensics data from the coroner, and it seems to verify everything in your report. So for now, you're in the clear. I told you I was innocent. And I put my neck out there for you. Norris was ready to lock you up. I know. I appreciate everything you've done so far, Detective. This whole thing has been a nightmare. And what's more, I'm not supposed to say anything, but we checked the phone records, and you haven't actually received a call from Kate in over a month. What? How is that possible? I played the message for you back at the station. I don't know, but I sense something unorthodox. Similarities to other cases in the past. Whatever's going on here, I don't think it's just a simple missing persons report. One last thing. There was a voicemail in Kate's answering machine from one Anthony Wells. He mentioned a Tim and Brian. Do those names mean anything to you? Yeah. The Reeves twins. Kate, Anthony, and I were friends with them in school. I actually just ran into Brian when I arrived in Forest Lawn. Do you know where we could contact them? Brian mentioned that they're staying in the Woodhaven trailer park, right by the entrance. Got it. For now, you are no longer detained, but I suggest you keep your head low and stay in town in case we need to get in touch. Okay. I'll call you again if we find any more relevant details pertaining to Kate. We'll find her, Jack. I give you my word. When the phone started ringing, my heart stopped for a moment. I was expecting to hear that distorted voice again. It was a relief to hear Kent's voice instead. Still, I wonder when I'll hear from that stranger again. Shoot. I meant to get a glass of water, but my back was killing me. I'll be right back. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? I'll get it. Marv, I'm not made of glass. Well, you may as well be, Mags. It's the end of the third trimester, and I just... I just want you to be careful, okay? Okay, fine. Besides, the doctor says I need to lose a few pounds anyways, so a few extra steps ain't gonna hurt me. Here you go, hon. Bandit! Come here, boy! <coughs> Who's a good boy? <coughs> yes, you are. You know, you're the sweetest man I've ever met. You must not know too many guys. Jerk. Yeah, you love me. I do love you. Mm. Is everything all right, by the way? You seem a little more tense than usual. Uh, it's just this case we've been working on. There's a missing woman, another woman dead, some mask-wearing goons, and God knows what else. And of course, Kent's been all over it like flies on shit. You could learn a few things from Adrian. I think he's a good partner for you. Oh yeah? Why's that? Well, for one, he always has your back. Yeah, well, so does Bandit here. Don't you, Bandit. You, you got my back. I mean it, Marv. I know. Kent's a good guy. Sometimes I think he's more interested in conspiracy theories than actual police work. Is it so bad to think outside the box? Well, no, but it isn't exactly an endearing quality either. You know some of the other cops? They think Kent's a whack job. You know what I think? I think you, Tommy Boy, and that pinheaded captain of yours, have tunnel vision. You don't always see the full picture. If there were more cops like Kent, maybe these cases would be solved a lot quicker. Uh, maybe you're right. I don't know. The guy just seems a little crazy. Sometimes the only sane answer to an insane world is insanity. Hey, Adrian, you catch the Pistons game last night? You know I don't watch sports, Marv. Eh, figured it was worth a shot. Do you actually do any real person stuff? I watch Jeopardy. But that's not... 
Uh, never mind. Good morning, gentlemen. I got the autopsy and forensics reports for that Gunderson woman. And I have to say, this is certainly an ugly and bewildering case. Yeah, I'll say. Have you contacted the family of the deceased? She was a vagrant, and we couldn't locate a next of kin. Well, let me know if anything else turns up there. What other leads do you have in the Kate Moore investigation? We have three persons of interest. Anthony Wells, Tim Reeves, and Brian Reeves. I want you to look into those POIs immediately. That's an order, gentlemen. Yes, sir. I'll leave you to your investigation, then. I expect your updated reports on my desk ASAP. Absolutely, sir. Whatever you say. Like we hadn't already thought of that. You know, I should be the police captain, not this asshat. You sure this is the right place? It better be. This is the only Anthony Wells in the state of Michigan. Mr. Wells! It's the police! Hey, Marv. Looks like a couple weeks of mail just sitting there. Not a good sign. Mr. Wells! Huh. Door's unlocked. Mr. Wells, your door was unlocked? If you're in here, you need to let us know. Oh, Jesus. I know that smell. Yeah. I think it's coming from the bedroom. Uh, uh. Dispatch, this is Sergeant Norris requesting a 1014 unit at 1762 Harrison Road. We got a 1054 possible suicide. We have two bodies now, Marv. I'm sensing a connection. And he has the same kind of weird drawings we found at Kate's house. The question is, why would he commit suicide? And how is Kate Moore connected to all of this? Maybe he was involved in her disappearance? It's a possibility. Let's run a background check on this guy, see what kind of dirt we can dig up. And he mentioned his father in the voicemail. We need to tell him about his son. And find out if he knows anything that we don't. Right. I'll call our and die and see if we can get the father's name and address. Come on, keep it down, Cooper, please. You do this every time. It's gonna be the death of me, I swear to God. Hold on, hold on. Who is it? It's the police. We need to speak with you, sir. Hello, Mr. Wells. My name is Detective Kent, and this is Sergeant Norris. May we come inside? Please, uh, call me Sherman. What's this all about? It's about your son, Anthony. Oh no. Come on in. You may want to sit down for this. I have some very bad news to tell you, Sherman. It's with a heavy heart that I have to inform you that your son, Anthony, was found dead in his home this morning. What? <laughs> no. No. Not my boy. <laughs> We don't know yet. We're still trying to figure that out. Oh, God. We're very sorry for your loss, Mr. Wells. I can't even fathom what you must be feeling. But we do have some questions that may help us determine what happened to your son. What questions? Well, did you notice anything out of the ordinary with Anthony? Oh, my God. I, I never... I mean, he was acting so strange, but I didn't think he'd... <laughs> Is
Is there a chance your son was using narcotics? No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Anthony is straight edge. He won't even touch cigarettes. <laughs> he always tries to get me to quit. <laughs> I understand how hard this all is for you to hear. But can you elaborate on what was strange about your son's behavior? He was... He was just so scared. Scared of what? He, he told me someone was watching him and that he was in danger. He wouldn't say who or why. I'd never seen him so shaken up and I didn't know how to react. I suggested that he talk with someone over at that finer's place, but... <laughs> Jesus. I should have just listened to him. <laughs> you can't blame yourself. I know you're hurting, but we believe your son was involved in something much bigger than he even knew. <laughs> and did Anthony happen to mention any videotapes? Yes. I don't know what was on them, but he told me it all started when he watched some tapes. Mr. Wells, I promise you, we'll be working diligently to find out what happened to your son and bring you some form of closure. If you want to see Anthony, we can offer you a ride to the hospital. Some family members prefer to see their loved ones right away. Thank you for the offer, Detective. But I don't think I can handle seeing him like that. <laughs> I understand. I'll be making a follow-up visit tomorrow, but should you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me at this number. We'll be in touch. Once again, I'm very sorry for your loss. <laughs> Detective Ken told me that Anthony Wells was dead. I couldn't believe it. Anthony was a good friend to Kate and I. I haven't seen him in years, but I still can't process that he's gone. More than that, I keep fearing for Kate's safety. If someone we were that close to is dead, and Kate's house was ransacked, it doesn't take a cynic to see that odds aren't looking good. As time went on, it seemed like the investigation wasn't going anywhere. I've also been anxious every time the phone rings. I keep expecting to hear that distorted voice again. But so far, nothing. And my nightmares... They haven't stopped. The power of this place is... It's overwhelming. Like, you can feel yourself changing into something else. Well, almost a month of work and we got fuck all to show for it. Wait, what about the tapes? Sherman said that Anthony's trouble started after he watched them. Jack also mentioned that he saw the tapes in Kate's house, but... They were gone before our first search and they haven't been spotted since. Yeah, the Reeves twins showed Anthony the tapes, and Jack saw two men outside of Kate's house before the tapes disappeared. A little coincidental, don't you think? I don't believe in coincidence. This whole situation just gives me chills. It doesn't feel quite... natural. The understatement king comes through again. I think it's time we pay those twins a visit. Police! Yes? Hey, I'm Sergeant Norris. This is my partner, Detective Kent. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for us. Is your brother around? Might be. I haven't seen him since last night. Well, do you know where he could be? No idea. Why are you looking for my brother? We're investigating the disappearance of Kate Moore. Kate's missing? That's terrible. Yes, it is. A friend of yours, Anthony Wells, mentioned you both in a voicemail. That's why we're here. What voicemail? It was about some tapes that you showed him. Anthony seemed to think he was being followed afterwards. Followed? By who? We don't know yet. We were hoping you and your brother could help us out with that. I would like to help, Detective, but I haven't seen or heard from either of them in a long time. I just hope they're all right. Anthony's dead. Huh? How did he die? Hung himself. You and your brother haven't noticed anyone following you. No way. 
We would have contacted the proper authorities if we did. What was on the tapes that you showed them? Wow. Johnny Law and Nab Jones gracing our doorstep. What's the special occasion? We were hoping you and Brian could shed some light on our investigation. Ooh, what are we investigating? The disappearance of Kate Moore. Kate's missing? Yes, she is. Why don't you talk to Anthony? He always had a weird thing for her. Yeah, we tried that already. And? He's dead, Tim. Holy shit. Anthony's dead? What happened? They said he hung himself. Wait, 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 so it was a suicide? He was found this morning, in his home. Hmm. Doesn't surprise me. What makes you say that? He was a very sensitive man. He was always moping around because Kate was marrying that Evans guy. Anthony mentioned tapes that you all watched. Can you tell us what was on them? Jesus. Some kind of freaky shit. Just flashing imagery. Possible snuff films. (laughs) It was fucking nuts. Why would you even show them something like that? We just thought it would be fun to see their reactions. And you never experienced anything strange afterwards? Not until this very moment. You got an attitude, you know that? Your waistline is showing, you know that? Hey, eyes are up here, sunshine. Look, we have reason to believe that the tapes are still in your possession. Is that so? Yeah. You mind if we take a look around? You mind showing me a fucking warrant? Oh, you don't have one. (laughs) Is this your first day on the job? Mr. Reeves, we just- Look, I've said all I'm gonna say to you pigs. Either come back with a warrant, or fuck off. Yeah, big talk. Sounds like you're hiding something. Then get your fucking warrant and find out. Otherwise, this conversation is over. (laughs) Fucking pigs. Hey, it isn't over till I say it is, you little cum stain. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Marvin, you need to calm down. Oh, fuck calm. I'm trying to do my job and this jockstrap is copping a fucking attitude. Norris, that's enough. Fuck! Hey, I'll be back, you son of a bitch, and I'll cuff you myself. And make sure they're extra tight. Listen, Brian, if you can think of anything that could aid our investigation, you can contact me at this number. Certainly, Detective. I'm sorry we couldn't be of more help. You all right, Marv? Oh, never better. I know Tim was being confrontational, but we have to stay focused. Focused on what, Adrian? That was our last lead, and it was a dead end. We still have Pinehurst, right? Maybe we can get in touch with our friend Dr. Wilson. See if he can provide any further details. That may be a long shot, but it's worth a try. Let's pay him a visit. Hey, darling. What's wrong? I can hear that tone in your voice. Uh, Just work stuff. I'll be alright. You better be. I happen to love you, you know. I know. I love you too. Will you be home soon? I just started making dinner. Uh, Kent and I were just about to visit Dr. Wilson about this case we're working on. No way! The Dr. Wilson? The one who handled the Bunny Man case? Yep, that's him. You have to invite them to dinner. Something told me to make extra anyway. I don't know, Max. Oh, wait. What are we having? One of your favorites. Chicken Parmesan. Okay, hold on. Hey, Kent, you like chicken Parmesan? Of course. I'm an Italian man. Good man. Sounds like a plan, babe. We'll be there shortly. Wonderful. I am so excited. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, new plan. My wife is making a delicious chicken parmesan, and I'm not about to miss out on that. So, call up the good doctor and have him meet us at my house for dinner, and ask him to bring anything pertaining to Anthony Wells. You got it. 
That was a lovely dinner, Mrs. Norris. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, here, hon. Let me give you a hand with that. Marvin will never admit it, but he's become a big softy since he found out Maggie was pregnant. I believe you're correct, Adrian. <laughs> but that's the power of family. I know when my wife and I had our first child, well, it changed my life. Made me see things differently. I understand that mindset, though I can't speak from experience. I'm surprised you haven't gotten married yet. Uh, I don't really have time to maintain a relationship. I'm married to my job. I know that's true. And you're very good at it. Thank you. On the topic of the job, I brought the information you requested about Anthony Wells. I know that you and Sergeant Norris are trustworthy, but I am required to ask, what is your interest in Mr. Wells? He was a POI in a case we're working on. As it turns out, he's dead now. Yes, I heard about that. Tragic story. We've exhausted all possible leads, and the only bit of information we have left is that he spoke to someone, presumably yourself, at Pinehurst State Hospital. We were hoping that the contents of his sessions could give us something more to go on. I see. Yes, Anthony was a patient of mine for a brief time. Such a scared and pained individual. I reviewed all the tapes before bringing them here, but I believe the ones that would be most beneficial are the first and the last. Now the first one here is where he explained the reason he sought help. I'm Dr. Clarence T. Wilson, and the night is April 17th. This is session number one with Anthony Wells, who has been struggling with intense anxiety, nightmares, hallucinations, and more. Hello, Anthony. I'm Dr. Wilson. Hello, Doctor. So I've read your paperwork, and I want to know when all of this started for you. It started when the Reeves twins showed my friend Kate and I these, uh, tapes they made. I see. And what was on the tapes? The mine. The... The mine on Hills Grove. Tim and Brian said they wanted answers about the night Jack and Charlie went to the mine. I guess it really started when we were all kids. So Tim and Brian are the twins? Yes, sir. Who are Jack and Charlie? Jack Evans and Charlie Matheson. You see, they went to the mine when we were kids. Ch Charlie disappeared and Jack left town. And the Reeves twins thought they could solve the mystery of what happened that night. I... I guess so. Well, what did they find? The tapes were... just jumbled. I... I couldn't really make anything out, but... I saw a mine shaft. Some kind of red and blue light, but... The thing that has been haunting me was this... figure. What kind of a figure? Something inhuman. Something evil, Doctor. What was it doing in the footage? No, you, you don't understand. It wasn't in the footage. It was coming through the footage. I'm not sure I follow. It, it was there, but it, it wasn't. And now it's here. It's here with us now. Yes. Listen. Hear anything, Anthony? I... To get out of here! Anthony! <sighs> so, that interference. Her voice. You didn't hear that in person? No. No, it was silent in person, but I heard it this time. My god. Any ideas who or what that could be? If we're assuming Anthony was telling the truth about some entity stalking him, then I think we just heard its voice. You may be right. Does he ever elaborate on what happened with Jack and Charlie? No. I tried to get some answers on the matter, but each time I saw him, he became increasingly frantic, and then this happened. In this last session, I knew something was wrong because he was too calm at first. I'm Dr. Clarence T. Wilson. This is my fifth session with Anthony Wells. Each visit from him has become more unhinged. He's terrified. In our last session, he was screaming at me that I couldn't help him. I don't believe that. Hello, Anthony. Listen, I know that our previous session didn't end on the brightest of notes. 
but I just want to listen to you. I know I can help you once I find the root of your pain. You're a good man, Doctor. But I don't need you anymore. Beg your pardon? You can't help me, but I met someone who can. Who can help you? <laughs> it all makes sense now. Anthony, please, have a seat. The station sends out the signals. In the mine. It's where they're formed. What are you saying? Now I can truly put an end to all this. <laughs> <laughs> the station has to go. Then they'll be vulnerable. Who will be vulnerable? I need you to talk to me or I can't help you. You can't help me anyways. I just wanted to tell you in person that I do appreciate all your efforts. But you won't be seeing me again. We're going to destroy it all. We're going to stop them. What the hell did I miss? I wish I could answer that. We can go over all the tapes now that you're here, Marv. But somehow Jack is involved in all of this. And one of the interviews supports my theory about the fire at the radio station. I think these sessions provide extra pieces to the puzzle. We just need to find out how they all fit together. It's gonna be a long night. You good, Doc? Of course. you are. I... I didn't tell them anything about you. I know that. Otherwise, we would not be having this conversation. Now listen carefully, Jack. Sergeant Norris and Detective Kent are a part of this now, same as you. It's imperative that when they question you, you answer them as honestly as possible. Wait, slow down. Question me about what? The mine on Hills Grove. You've always been a part of this, Jack, but soon I'll help you find Kate and end the nightmare. You have my word. How soon? Look, whatever is going on with this, mine, means nothing to me. I just want to find Kate, and I'm no closer now than when I first got here. There's more to the story than just your fiancé. I don't care. You said you'd help me find Kate, period. I'm not interested in anything you're selling. You can't outrun your past forever, Jack. Or Charlie. Fuck you. Who is it? It's your fairy godmother. We need to talk, Jack. And what's up? Turns out you're more involved in these shenanigans than you've been letting on. As of last night, we uncovered some findings in our investigation that pertain to an incident from your childhood. May we come in? Sure. Alright, no more games. No more bullshit. Spit it out. Spit what out? The truth! When we first met, you mentioned bad memories that kept you from returning to Forest Lawn. I now believe you were referring to an incident with Charlie Matheson. How do you know that name? Apparently your pals, the Reeves twins, were doing a little investigation about Charlie's disappearance. Everything that's happening right now, it all leads back to that night. Jack, I know it's difficult for you, but we need to know what happened to Charlie. If the Reeves twins are investigating it, ask them what happened. Wow, I hadn't thought of that. We tried talking to them already. And? Jack, let me tell you, I was this close to shooting one of them. This close. Listen, I told you we would find Kate. And now you're her last hope, Jack. We need you to tell us what happened that night. Okay. Fine. I didn't tell you everything about my past because I... I hoped... 
it wasn't relevant to Kate's disappearance. <sighs> I guess I should have known better. Take your time, Mr. Evans. Ever since I could remember, I've been marked. My parents told me it was imagination. Irrational fears. Anything they could come up with to make me feel better. <sighs> it wasn't my imagination. There is something out there in those woods, deep in that mine, and it took hold of me. More and more, I was losing track of reality. Every time I was at school, I could feel him watching me. I could see things that weren't there. I was never alone. But one night, one night I found myself in a trance. Like, I, I was sleepwalking, only I was awake. It, it was leading me to the mine on Hills Grove. <laughs> Charlie was my neighbor and my best friend. <laughs> he must have seen me going into the woods and, and he followed. <laughs> he kept calling out to me. Jack, where are you going? Jack, you're scaring me! I could hear him, but I couldn't speak. I wasn't in control. He followed me to the center of the mine where there was this statue of a man and there was a mask on its face. I remember screaming internally. I was horrified by the mask but my body kept moving against my will Jack what are you doing what the hell was that we need to get out of here Jack that thing is glowing I spoke but it wasn't through my own volition I was being controlled by the demon. Despite my inner struggle, my arm reached for the strange mask. No! Don't touch it! Charlie grabbed me and tried to pull me back, but the figure was too strong. I was so close to grabbing the mask. Charlie grabbed the mask, and I was thrown backwards. I immediately snapped out of my trance just in time to see Charlie succumb to the mask's power. Charlie, put it back! Please! The faceless monster loomed out from the shadows, and then Charlie put on the mask. I never saw Charlie again after that night. What a load of horse shit. Hey, fuck you. You wanted the truth, asshole. Now you have it. Glowing masks, faceless demons, a kid's eyes popping out of his damn skull. Kent, Kent, please. Tell me you don't believe this shit. Marvin, look at him. Does he look like he's lying? I've seen enough in Forest Lawn to take his story on a little faith. Do you think this is easy for me to talk about? 
My best friend sacrificed himself so that I could live. And now, I'm right back in this fucking town. Like it was all for nothing. And it feels like I never left. Look, I'm sorry, Jack. I was out of line, all right? Proceed. What happened after that? Did they ever find Charlie? No. Weeks of searching and people doubting my story, but they never found him. Eventually, search parties began to disappear in the mine as well. Then one day, it all stopped. My parents didn't want to hear what I had to say. There was a story about Charlie's family moving to West Virginia, and everyone moved on. But I couldn't. My family, Kate, the twins, they all said I had an overactive imagination. How did you end up leaving town? I begged to get away from Forest Lawn. I told my parents that I couldn't stand the pain of losing Charlie. And that was true. But I... You what? I couldn't stand that feeling anymore. The feeling of that... That thing watching me. I was so desperate to get away from this place. But I guess you can never outrun your past. Despite surviving that night, despite moving across the country, <laughs> hell, even a decade after the incident, it's like he's still in my head. Your friend Anthony mentioned a figure, very similar to what you're describing. Not that long ago it seemed like we were grasping at straws, but now, the pieces are falling into place. The fuck? Expecting company, Mr. Evans? No. Your horses there, cowpoke. Who the hell are you? Uh, this is... I'm the Duke Winston, Mr. Sheriff. The floor you're standing on, the air you're breathing, it all belongs to me. This here's my motel. Oh, Christ. Can we help you? Well, are you two Canton Norris? Yes, that's us. Our occupants have never gotten mail sent to the motel in all the time I've owned it. Guess you three are special. Who is this from? You're the detective here, yeah, not me. I just found it in the office when I got back from lunch. Seems like a mystery, but I'll leave you boys to it. The law ain't what it used to be. Pointing a gun at a man in his own place of business. What the hell is this country coming to? Next thing they'll be coming from a stack of sandwiches and Oreos. Interesting character that Duke is. Hey, hey. That's the Duke to you, Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarge, I think you should be the one to open this. Oh, I'm honored. To Jack, Kent, and Norris. Hmm. Why the hell is my name last? Just open it, Marv. What if it's a bomb? Then we all die together. Hmm. I can live with that. There's a note here. This device is called a skeleton key, and it contains the information you seek. Do not remove it from the box until you're in the safety of the precinct. All contents are classified and a potential threat to those who view them. Removal of the skeleton key will activate the sequence. Once viewed, atomization will commence to preserve discretion. CR. So it is a bomb. And who the fuck is CR? Do what he says, and we may just find out. Hello, I'm CR. I represent an organization called the Men in Black. We are a branch beyond the government which specializes in unexplained phenomena. The efficacy of our mission relies on stealth, anonymity, and secrecy. We are shadows, operating in plain sight. Until recently, we merely observed an entity from outside of our dimension. Some call it the Guardian. Others have given it the nickname, the Slender Man. There have been sightings and legends of this Guardian spanning over a hundred years. We used to believe it was passive, perhaps even an ally, but eventually we noticed a shift in the creature's behavior. It was becoming aggressive and violent, 
and it was recruiting. We began to document intermittent broadcast signals. They were unusual and seemed to alter the minds of those who heard them. And we identified a local radio station as the source of the strange broadcasts. This led to many reports of masked assailants, all connected to the Slender Man. We refer to them as vessels. Some are mindless husks, while others are willing enforcers for the creature. We tried to avoid your involvement in all of this, but you're in too deep now. And if we don't work together, it will consume all of you. Like it consumed Anthony Wells. It is now evident to us that Anthony and Kate were roped into a deadly game, facilitated by the Raves twins. Based on the footage we converted from the tapes procured from Kate's residence, we now know that Tim and Brian Raves are acting as vessels for the Slender Man. We're getting close, is that thing on? Yeah, yeah, I'm recording. You better be. You don't really think Slender Man is in the mine, right? Is that really a question? Who else are we gonna find? Santa Claus? You heard everything Jack said. There's no way he'd make all that up. Yeah. Plus, all those search parties just vanished and Charlie's body was never found. What if he's still in there, too? Well, there's only one way to find out. Come on. Holy shit, do you hear that? Yeah, it's like a hum or something. Sounds like it's coming from over there. What is that red light? Holy shit! <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. You pissing yourself yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, trembling. Dick. Let's go check it out. never seen anything like it in my life. You see this freaky black ooze coming out of it? Yeah, it's like it's alive. Tim, something's happening. The whole place is shaking. Brian, look. Is that... It's him. It's him. Really? Because he, he looks different from the way people describe him. So they got their facts wrong. Are you getting this or what? Yeah, no shit. But he's not showing up on camera. What? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, you fuck. He's not there. <sighs> fuck. We heard all the stories about you, man. We wanted to meet you. I can't believe you're real. People keep disappearing in this place. Where do you take them? I'll show you. Jack, this was the moment your friends became his vessels. They exposed Anthony and Kate to the Slender Man and he infected their lives. Anthony was driven mad by the creature, but he did not take his own life. You see, we both agreed to put an end to all of this by destroying the radio station and the mine. Anthony succeeded with the station, but he was killed before he could complete his mission. What you are about to see are the final moments of Anthony Wells. CR, I took out the radio station, but the vessels are close behind. I'm going to hide this camera here, so if anything should happen to me, Hopefully, there's some record of it. Always, always watching. Kate, we're so close to stopping all of this. We just need to destroy the mine. Then the nightmares, the visions, they'll end when this is all over. No eyes. Always watching. Kate, are you listening? No eyes. Please stay with me, Kate. I need you. Just a few more hours and we're free of this hell. 
What? No, no, no! Kate! We have to go! Now! What are you doing? We have to go. Jack, my mother is dead. The vessels are getting close now. He's with them too. I love you, Jack. Goodbye. What the hell is wrong with you? Nothing. I found a purpose. A purpose? We were your friends, goddammit! Yes. Were. I know that was hard for you to see, Jack, but... You deserve to know the truth. Now that you've seen everything, it's time to pass this mission on to the three of you. It will end where it all started. The portal that was found in the mine. We call it the keyhole. And it must be sealed to stop the <laughs> Ah, son of a bitch! Norris, Jack, are you alright? Yeah, uh, I'm fine. Uh, just peachy! Christ. Looks like it's not just the police station. Yeah. Every damn light is out on the whole street. Guys, we need to talk about what just happened. The footage, I mean. Right. I'm sorry you had to see those things. Yeah. And me too. I can't believe the Reeves twins are behind all of this. Hey, I told you, Kent. I told you I never liked twins. And those two creeps were hiding something. Do you... <clears throat> do you think Kate's still alive? I'm afraid I can't answer that. But if she is, we'll get her back to you. That's right. I think I'm going to pay these Reeves twats a visit tomorrow. Hey, Captain. Any idea what happened? So far, there are no reports of blown transformers or downed power lines, but the entire grid appears to be out. No point in being here, so you gentlemen might as well get on home. Should be up and running in the morning. Understood, sir. Thanks for the update. Well, I'll drop Mr. Evans off at the Twin Pines before I head home. We have plenty to discuss tomorrow. You take care of yourself, Marv. Always do. Hey, darling, I'm... Maggie? Is that you? Maggie, what's going on? Hello? Maggie, hold on. I'm on my way. That's very good, Sergeant Norris. Who the fuck is this? Better get here fast. You motherfucker, if you touch her, I'll snap your goddamn neck with my bare hands. You know where to find me. Come alone or she dies. Hello? Hello? Shit, shit, shit! Come on. Pick up! Norris, is everything okay? They have her, Adrian. They have Maggie. Wait, who has her? The, the fucking vessels! They're at the house right now! Call back up and get your ass over there! Okay, I'll be right there. <sighs> come on, come on. Maggie, I'm here! Fuck. Fuck. Oh no, 
found it. Oh, what did they do to you, boy? Oh, God. I'm sorry, boy. I'm so sorry. Marvin Norris! Your wife would like a word with you. <laughs> Marvin! <laughs> oh my god. Maggie! It's gonna be okay, honey. Drop the gun. Oh, okay, okay. Just don't hurt her. <laughs> I'm so scared, Marvin. Who are these people? Shut up. No! Don't you fucking touch her! I wouldn't do that again if I were you. The numbers are not on your side. Let her go! Let her go, you fuckers! <laughs> Whatever this is, she's got nothing to do with it. Please. No! <laughs> oh, fucking stop! Please! You do whatever you want to me, but let her go! There's no version of this where we let her go. You and your partner flew too close to the sun. You're being punished. Look at her face, Sergeant Norris. Look, let her go! Marvin, please! Why are they doing this? Listen, tell her it's gonna be okay. Let her go and I'll do whatever the fuck you want. Say it! <laughs> it's gonna be okay, Max. Baby, I love you so much. We're gonna make it through this. I promise. I love you, I love you too. Fuck. I'm already bored with this. <laughs> you knew there were consequences to your actions. No! No! Don't you fucking touch her! No! <sighs> Congratulations. It's a boy. Please, just please don't. I know. No. I know. Please, please, please don't. It'll all be okay. Please don't. His friends are here. <sighs> Fucking pigs. Move it! Marv, I... Oh my god.
Please, uh, give me a moment with the detective. Yes, sir. Adrian, this case is clearly more serious than your reports have indicated. In addition, the agency will label this tragedy as a conflict of interest and a threat to your safety. For these reasons, I'm officially dismissing you and Sergeant Norris from this investigation. I understand, Captain. Well, I don't. Sergeant, I know you're hurting. Christ, I can't even imagine the pain you're feeling right now. Trust me. You have no idea, Captain. Well, you're right. I can't truly understand what you're feeling. But it is in everyone's best interest to reassign this case. Reassign? It's my wife that was butchered! My baby, but for fuck's sake. These animals just took everything from me! Exactly! This has gotten far too personal. Norris, look at me. Look at me. We're going to catch these motherfuckers. We're going to make them pay. But we need level heads here. All I need is to see them dead. All of them. No arrests. No trials. Dead! Stand down, Sergeant! Don't tell me to stand down! I'm gonna... I'm gonna put down every last one of these dogs! Enough with that shit! Given the emotional trauma you've just endured, you would be a detriment to the administration, and most importantly, to yourself. I have no choice but to suspend you for 30 days with pay. What is this bullshit, Mitchell? You need time to clear that head of yours. For God's sake, you need time to grieve. Marvin, he's right. This case has gotten bigger than we anticipated. So what? You're just gonna give up now, Kent? After we've gotten this far? You need time to step away from all this, Norris. From now on, let us handle this. Fuck you. I'll talk to him, Captain. Good. After tonight, he's going to need all the support he can get. A death is never the end. It is simply a chapter in our lives to which we pass on to those we leave behind. Every soul has a purpose from our birth to our very last breath. We must remember that every word that we write into that very book of life is not meant to be contained, just as water flows from out your hand. Our time here on Earth is something we must simply experience until we all meet again in the next life. Hey. Hey. Funeral was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I picked out all of her favorite flowers. And I know this is going to sound dumb, but there was this little cardinal sitting in a tree the whole time. Almost like he was watching over us, you know? That's not dumb. I actually heard a story years ago about cardinals representing your loved ones. When you see one, it's a sign that they're okay. And that they're still with you. Yeah. I missed her a lot today, Adrian. I missed her a lot today. Marvin, I'm so sorry this all happened. You and me both. But they're resting now. She looks so peaceful. I'll never have a chance to know my son, Adrian. I'll never get to see him grow up. Take him to a baseball game for his first day of school. He keeps me up at night. <laughs> they're still out there, though. The people who did this are still out there. And it's been haunting me. Now that my family's at peace. 
I'm going after the ones who stole them from me. Hey, listen, we're no longer on the case. Let the station handle it. Besides, it's only been a week, Marvin. You still need time to grieve. Adrian, we've known each other a long time. It would mean a lot to me, and to Maggie, if you were there with me when I take them down. Marvin, we don't even know who they are. We know two of them. I'll get those pieces of shit to talk. Mitchell sent a squad to the trailer park. They found nothing there. What do you mean there was nothing there? The Reeves twins are gone, and without a trace. You won't find anything there. Then I'll keep turning over stones until I do find something. Alone if I have to. But it would mean a lot to know that my partner has my back. You know I'll always have your back, but we can't do this. I, I can't. I'm sorry. Okay. I understand. Hey, wait! Forget it, Kent. Wouldn't want you to break the rules. Hello? Jack. It's me. Open up. We need to talk. Norris? What are you doing here? I thought you were removed from the case. Yeah, that hasn't changed. Listen, you're not expecting any visitors, are you? No. Captain Mitchell advised that I stay here until his firm has new information to report. I haven't heard anything in days. Good. We have time. And where's Ken? <sighs> Following orders. Where else? Oh. Look. I, I heard about your wife. I I'm so sorry. Don't. Just don't, alright? I didn't come here for your condolences. I'm here because you and I have to destroy that mine. What? CR called me on my cell. He knew there was an interruption with the skeleton key sequence back at the station. We never got to finish it, remember? Yeah, that's right. Something interfered and spoke before the power outage. Exactly. That was him, Jack. The creature you saw in the mine. The Slender Man. Anthony Wells was supposed to destroy the mine after burning down the radio station, but he never had the chance. CR was going to pass his mission down to us. Okay, but the mine is huge. How is he supposed to destroy it without attracting attention? With these. What the hell are those? Before Anthony was recruited, our little shadow friends hid these explosives in a secret location. CR led me to them. He says these little nuggets pack a blast radius big enough to take down the mine from the inside. Holy shit. Yeah, these men in black, they're the real deal. Listen, Jack, you know I wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for anything serious. This is a two-man job, and it's just us now. There's a reason CR called me, and why he chose you. We have to do this, you and me. I'm sorry, but I, I can't do it. This whole thing is insane. I'm sick of hearing I can't. Look, I came back to Forest Lawn to find my fiance. I don't know where she is, or if she's even alive. I know that I'm more connected to this web of madness than I realized, but I just want her back, Norris. That's all I'm here for. You don't think I want my wife back? My family! You son of a bitch, Kate is the reason they're gone. She could have stopped them and you know it. Those monsters, they slaughtered Maggie right in front of me. They shot my baby in the head. Do you see me giving up? Just... I buried my family today, and my partner of several years turned his back on me. I have nothing left, Jack. But that won't stop me from taking the vessels down. I'm gonna find and I'm gonna kill every last one of them! For Maggie! For my son! 
And, and if you help me, for Kate. Oh, uh, hello, Duke. Hey, uh, there's someone in the lobby. Apparently she's looking for you. And, uh, well, she bears a striking resemblance to that lady in your wallet photo. Figured you'd want to come out and see for yourself. Kate! I can't believe it! You're okay! I got her some food from the Double Down Diner. Girl looked as though she hadn't eaten for days. <laughs> I was worried to death. I'm so, so sorry, Kate. I should have never let you fly here alone. I should have been there for you. I'll never abandon you again. I promise. Oh, God. I love you so much. <laughs> we asked the Duke to keep quiet about Kate's arrival and brought her into the motel room. She took a much needed shower as I went to grab her a fresh change of clothes. Nora stuck around until I got back. I still couldn't believe she showed up. It felt like I waited lifetimes to see her again. While I wanted to give her time to rest, Norris was determined to get answers from her. Kate, I get that you've been through a lot recently. Between Anthony kicking the bucket, finding out your friends are lunatics, and being caught in the middle of this disaster, I'm sure it's hard to make heads or tails of everything. I'm not expecting that. However, anything you can give me will be of major help. Do you know where the twins are? I can't see him. No? <laughs> Alright. How about the vessels? What do you know about them? Norris. Maybe... Jack! Just let me handle this. There has to be a reason they didn't kill you like they did your friend. Do you have any idea why you were spared? And where were you all this time? Oh. Oh. Watch. Never. What? S stay. Oh. Oh. Uh, watch. This is pointless. Oh, oh, watch. It's alright, honey. Just lay down and rest. I'm sorry, Norris. She just needs time. Like you said. She's been through a lot. Yeah, well... She's not the only one. Yeah, I know. It doesn't matter what trauma she's gone through, she's going to that mine with us. What? Doesn't this sudden appearance strike you as a little bit odd? I mean, after all this time, after all the death, and after I arrived at your doorstep, she just pops up like a magic fucking hat trick? My suspicions aside, there's something Kate knows that we don't. There's a reason your fiancé is still alive. Now that she's here, she's going to help us. What was that? Shit. It's them. Wait here. I'm gonna try and get the drop on them. Shit. There they are. I'm gonna kill them, Maggie. I'm gonna kill them all. Shit. Oh, fuck you! Jesus. There's more coming out of the woods. They're everywhere. If you ain't a pain customer, get the hell out of my way. I'm spraying like a son of a bitch. Hey, Winston, get your head down. Don't worry about me, Norris. These dumb bastards have no idea who they're dealing with. This here's my property, and your stay here is unwelcome. I'ma turn this motel to a cemetery real fast. Six generations of Winstons have kept it safe. And I'm not about to break tradition. I'm the Duke. Duke! Look out! Oh, 
fuck all of you! Jack, save yourself! Oh, thank God you're okay. They're all over the place out there. And they got the Duke. Fuck, we need to find a way out of here. Wait, the Duke is dead? They tore him limb from limb. Now help me find a way out of here. Hey, the bathroom window. It leads out back. Good. You get your girl, get outside and get to my truck. What about you? I'm gonna make sure you get there. Now go! Kate, it's time to go. Come on. Can't leave. Can't leave. Can't leave. We are leaving, Kate. Right now. Come with me. All right, you motherfuckers. Let's see how you like a little fire. Ooh. There's too many of them. There's no way out of the parking lot. The fuck there isn't. What do we do now? We take out that goddamn mine and sing Kumbaya as we celebrate. Good plan. What are you doing? Norris, I'm glad you called. Listen close, Adrian, because I don't have much time. I'm with Jack and Kate in my truck. We're on our way to the mine, and those vessels aren't far behind. Wait, you found Kate? She found us. And now, we're going to blow that mine back to hell. Marvin, pull back. Let Mitchell and the firm handle this. You know it's not that simple. CR chose us, and this only ends one of two ways. Either we work together and stop this threat, or we're divided and they pick us off one by one. Look, Maggie believed in you, Kent. She said you had a sixth sense. That you could see things others couldn't. And that I should trust you. And that's what I'm doing right now. We need to do this or my family was butchered for nothing! Norris, I'm sorry, but I forbid breaking protocol. The fuck protocol! They killed the Duke and everyone else at the motel. They're right behind us. This is all real and it's happening. And we don't have a choice. But you do what you think is right. Maybe she was wrong about you. Goodbye, Adrian. Norris? Norris! Damn it. Norris, it's pitch black in here. I know. One thing I learned from Adrian is to bring an extra flashlight. Here you go. I take it he's not coming? Doesn't matter. We have a job to do. Do you see this? The walls are covered in something. This place is changing. It doesn't even look like a mine anymore. And it smells like something's burning. Christ! What the hell happened to this place? It belongs to them now. Keep moving. No. No! Not back here! Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. Not back here. I'm right here with you. <laughs> Jack? What is it? My head hurts. 
hurts. Just hang in there, baby. It's almost over. Quiet! I heard something over there. We're not alone in here. Hurt. Yet. Hurt. Kate. Jack, don't! Ah, oh, fuck! Kate, come back! I'm not leaving you again! Shit! Which way did she go? Kate! Jack! Jack! Kate! I'm coming! Damn it! It's flooded! Kate! Jack! 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 No. It can't be. Charlie? Why did you leave me, Jack? It shows you, Jack. And you let it take me! No! No! I... I, I was scared! I, I, I didn't know what to All do! All the pain... <laughs> was meant for you! I'm so sorry! It didn't want me! It wanted you, Jack! It didn't want me! No! It didn't want me! It didn't want me! It didn't want me! No! Charlie! No! No! It shows you. Mask. It was you at Kate's house. No. Oh, my God. Get this mask off of me! Oh God! Kate! What? I don't understand! It's okay, Jack. What? Why would you? They took me to get to you. I'm sorry! I wanted to save you from all of this! You, you did, Jack. You did. <laughs> Marvin. Help me. I need you. You're not real. Look at me. And tell me I'm not real. Yeah, like I said. You're not real. <gasps> Jesus! Max! You... got me killed. Oh uh, no. No! It's almost like you killed me yourself. Oh, that's bullshit! God damn it, I did everything I could to save you! You failed. <laughs> and you didn't just fail me. <laughs> you failed both of them. <laughs> I think I knocked out some teeth. Don't worry, Sergeant Lawrence. You're gonna be a daddy up in heaven. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where you going, Sergeant? We're not done yet. <laughs> Fucking hell! Jesus Christ! <laughs> 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 Oh!
Eat the fine asshole. Tim! Tim! Say the same for your brother, Ryan! He can't hear you! I just turned his head into squash papaya. You're next, motherfucker! You murdered my entire world! You're gonna die just like your brother. You won't make it out of here alive. <laughs> oh, I'll be walking out of here soaked in your blood with a shit-eating grin! <laughs> you were saying... <laughs> you fucking coward! I'll kill every single one of you freaks! Oh, shit! Norris, are you all right? Yeah. How did you find me? I followed the gunshots. You know, the usual. <laughs> it's good to see you, brother. You too. Let's finish this. Where's Jack? He chased after Kate. I think he went that way. Right. Let's go. Hey! Over here. Jack! Jack. What happened? The Slender Man took her to get to me. And I killed her. Oh my god. I wanted nothing more than to keep her safe. I tried to shelter her from my past, from this place. But like a shadow, it caught up with me. And all the time I tried to outrun my fears, I was only running toward them. You can't blame yourself, Jack. Trust me. I know from experience. But I was marked. I was always meant to be here. You both need to leave. Jack, we can't leave you here. There's nowhere else for me to be. I'll take care of the explosives. It all makes sense now. I have to finish Anthony's mission. It has to end where it all began. Thank you both for trying to help me. But you need to go now. Hey, can't you heard the man. It's time to go. Goodbye, Jack. Jack Evans. My child. You wanted me back. Well, I'm here now. I'm home. Run like hell, Kent! We'll take your car! Okay. Come on!
seemingly gone without a trace. All reports of an explosion and gunfire have been dismissed by authorities. Now here's Wendy with a celebrity update. Unmarked helicopters seem to circle in the area and authorities. Reports and comments sent to our hotline. My best guess is the massive sinkhole is a result of the raging thunderstorms and rain battering the town. My name is Guerrero Bernstein. Well, the place was very old and I doubt it's seen any repairs lately. Uh, the rainfall was simply for the nature. Yes. But very unpredictable. Gas is in the mine. Next question. The Bigfoot and the, the aliens and the Mothman, and they're all connected. Those stories about the other towns is just derivative bullshit. Those wannabes pretend they live in Forest Lawn. What is this place? I can't move. Where am I? No. 